It's Thursday, it's 8 p.m. It is time for Kitchen Party. Woo! <laughs> Kitchen Party is brought to you each week by Bakespace.com. You can visit the website for more information, recipes, and links to all of our past shows. At Bakespace.com, you'll also find our iPad app, Cookbook Cafe, that allows you or your organization to create and sell an e-cookbook containing all your favorite recipes. Tonight's guest is Evie Abler, food photographer and blogger from whipandclick.com. But now it's time to get the kitchen party started. So here is our front of house mining the velvet rope, our Uber chef, our hundred dollar item on the menu, f- founder and CEO of Bakespace.com, Babette Papai. <laughs> okay, nice. either I'm on way too much Nyquil, or I just heard like the greatest introduction to me ever <laughs> in the history of the earth. <laughs> So thank you everyone for joining. Hey guys. Hey, how was your week so far? Woo! Did we uh, anything new? Meatloaf. Meatloaf. That yeah. was what I made. Meatloaf. <laughs> I made meatloaf and I made uh, salad and I made roast chicken and I made uh, pulled pork. Oh, I, uh, oh, you mean in life? No, I'm sorry. Nothing else in life. <laughs> well, since, since we're talking about food, um, Renee, did you eat anything interesting this week? Um, I am working on a shrimp scampi recipe. I'm trying to perfect my shrimp scampi. Oh, so, oh, oh, oh. yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> I think I think I'm gonna have it down pat tonight. So we'll see how that that goes, and I'll let y'all know. It's kind of nice. fancy. Yeah. Uh, well, not Jeff, really. what about it's basically you? butter, garlic, well, and wine. Uh, well, uh, I j- I'll stop at the wine. <laughs> how, can go, how can you go wrong with that butter? Right. Mm. Uh, Jeff, what about you? I attempted to eat the world this week, and uh, <laughs> I pretty I pretty much came very close. Anybody who's watched my Facebook has has seen uh, I I posted all the photos up there, not really for function, more for jealousy. It's kind of a culinary terrorism, um, but uh, I had a good time doing it. People questioned whether or not I had hours and not you know years to live. So um, you know it's who I am. It's I, I decided to own it. I uh-huh. love following you on Facebook. It's delicious. <laughs> Mm. Your heart is staging a rebellion, ready to attack the aortal wall at any moment. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I will be now, there to defend it. Before we get into the show, I, we, you know, because I am, I've had the flu for about two weeks now, so I apologize. I'm going a little bit out of order. So let's just have us all introduce ourselves really f- quickly so that the people at home who watch every single week Kitchen Party or also some of the new folks who are tuning in on YouTube. In mm-hmm. fact, I may have just forgotten to tweet that we were live. So if anyone is watching, please tweet it. We will retweet it. I did. Um, <laughs> um, I'm Babette, like uh, Douglas said, the founder of Bakespace.com. Welcome to Kitchen Party. I'm a little slow today, so I'm going to kind of pass the torch on to my co-host so you don't have to listen to this crazy voice all night. So, Douglas, do you want to do the next introduction? Sure. I don't know. It sounds kind of sexy, Babette, when you have a <laughs> I think it's working. Raspy voice there. Anyway, uh, I'm Douglas E. Welch, and I am the jokester of the crew, it seems, this evening. Uh, I write on food, gardening, technology, careers, and more over at DouglasEWelch.com. You can find everything about me and much, much more over there. And Renee? I'm Renee Lynch. I'm a writer and editor at the LA Times. I work across a number of feature sections, including food and calendar. I saw you in the paper. I saw you in the paper. I saw you. <laughs> Jeff, take it oh, away, okay. Jeff. I thought, Renee, I thought Renee was going to fill that awkward pause. I'm Jeff Houck. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm the food writer of the Tampa Tribune and uh, blogger at TBO.com. And, uh, you know, it's nice. I, it's been a couple weeks since I've been on Kitchen Party in a regular forum and not at an Irish pub or in some sort of witness relocation setting. So I'm, I'm glad to be here. Did you do something to your hair? It looks good. Um, I had it in curlers up until about two minutes before showtime. So. Um, you know, I always worry about my hair. It's, it's my very hair. important. Are you talking about this hair? Or? <laughs> no, which hair? Yeah. I've got like this Duck Dynasty thing going on. It's really kind of good. Wow. Now, the next person on our list is our esteemed guest for the evening. I hope everyone who wants to know about food photography has tuned in because this is the place you need to be. Uh, <laughs> Great. You know, Evie, do you want to do a quick introduction on a little bit sure. about your background? And then yep. we'll talk about how I, for- I even forgot how I found you. All I know <laughs> is I saw your pictures and I was like, we Ooh. have to bring her on to Kitchen yeah. Party. Nice. That's nice. Well, guten Abend. Um, I'm Evie. I am originally from Germany. I have lived in New York City now for a while, 12 years. 
I'm a trained photographer and about three years ago I fell in love with food photography because my good friend Alban, who's a pastry chef, asked me to uh, photograph her new line of pastries and after that I just went for food. I just, it's so wonderful and together we also write a blog called Whip and Click where we talk about seasonal uh, treats, seasonal desserts. And I think the first time I met you was at um, one of the New York food conferences. I think it was the, um, the food, the, one of the associations. The, oh, ooh. was it IACP? Yes, it was. And oh, you had a booth. And oh, I introduced myself. Yeah. That's awesome. I totally mm -hmm. forgot about that. Yeah. You know, this year they're, they're going to hold their event in San Francisco and they announced the nominees because we had, we had our iPad app was nominated and they announced the nominees and I was like, I didn't even, I forgot to submit. <laughs> so I felt kind of like a jerk. I'm like, everyone's going to think we're like, we lost. And I'm like, no, 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 we forgot to submit. I yeah, promise. Yeah. But it's a good, it's a great event. Yeah, um, it is. You know, I, I went to your website and I was just so blown away by the photos. How, mm. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got into photography and did, was food a natural thing for you to get into? And I'm going to, I'm going to mute myself so I can do a couple of tweets. So if right, I right, right. if I don't come back quickly, uh, Renee, Douglas, Jeff, you guys take over. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, so f I have been into photography since high school. I started the photo club at my high school, and then I also went to university for photography. So photography was it. I even got a master's in fine art and photography. And then once I came across food photography, uh, it was just perfect. I love, yeah, I love the food, I love the cooking, and um, I just, ah, it's so wonderful to work in a team as well, because when you do food photography professionally, then you usually you have a stylist, you have an assistant, you have uh, people who help you with the props and all that, so it's a really nice um, teamwork, team effort to do food photography for magazines or books. Had so you just never just shot food before that? Was that uh, what kind of photography were you doing? I was doing. I was an in-house photographer for one of the New York museums, so I was shooting a lot of artwork for their books and artwork for their websites and events and portraits of the board members and everything that was there. Yeah, lots of um, editorial stuff as well. So sometimes they would need a shot of an editorial shot of their latest exhibition for one of the newspapers. So I then went out and we send it. So everything, everything. So can yeah. I uh, can I um, just ask a question here? Sure. Okay, I uh, I'm I'm big into observations. Um, you have a giant black square behind you and a giant black <laughs> umbrella. And, a, and I believe those are backdrops. And I, I, for people who don't know what those are, because I've dealt with photos for a long time in studio mm -hmm. shots, just not, not you know, serial numbers or anything, what do they do? I mean, are they, are they light kits or what are they? Right, yeah, they are, they are light kits. Right now, for food photography, it's in style to shoot all natural light. So right. for a food photography set, I wouldn't be using them. Sometimes I also shoot products. So for example, let's say, um, um, some a wine bottle or so and then you need um, some artificial light so those are reflectors and diffusers I set a little flashlight into the umbrella and then it gives a nice diffused light or into the softbox back there and the backgrounds just help if you need a white like a product shot white background then I just use the white background and then there's a black one back there mm -hmm. yeah and then there's another I can put a rod over here and hang fabrics that can be nice backdrops. So you have a talent. You could actually be a weather forecaster with all your <laughs> family. <Right. laughs> and I could have my the umbrella in my hand. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little teeny, little teeny, <laughs> tiny yeah, umbrella. If I go all the way back, it might work really nice. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is called forced perspective. <laughs> Now is that is that your your home studio or where are yeah. you right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's my home studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now Douglas, Renee, and Jeff, do you guys have any photo background or anything like that? 
Now that that could be taken. That's kind of yeah. um, ambiguous. You mean do we have backgrounds to take photos against? <laughs> no. Or do, we, or do we have a photo background? Do I do. You... I do have some ad hoc photo backgrounds that I use. <laughs> um, I am a dedicated amateur photographer, but nothing like even most of the more dedicated amateurs with multiple lenses and all sorts of that. I just recently upgraded to an SLR, but it's been mm. a while. I tend to try to take the best photos I can take with whatever camera I have at hand, whether it's the, you know, the iPhone or whatever, um, just trying to apply some of the basic photography concepts using whatever tool you got. Hey, Douglas, you're, you're going to have to go back and watch this video when you just said that. Your two cats in the background just, just had, had a punch. I, see, I, too, am observant. <laughs> oh, they're up on the trunk there. I see. Okay. Your cats just, one of them just whacked the other one. It was awesome. It was really... <laughs> We have, we have one new one. They actually settled in very nice. We only had them three weeks and they're already based. That's playing. They're not really fighting. They're not hissing or anything. They're just having what we call kitty crazies, which I take a lot of pictures of the cats. You know, you can tell right away when someone has children because they're, they're, they stop, you stop seeing pictures of their cats in their Facebook feed and immediately start seeing pictures of the baby. Um, looking back through old photographic albums, we notice that a lot. That, oh, look, cats, cats, cats. That's the moment. Oh, that's what we have. Okay. okay. You know, my boyfriend and I, we have all of our dog photos. And I told him we, there's a thing that just came in the, the mail. A local Rusty's is a pet, pl a pet place near us. And they said, do you want to come get your picture with your dog and the Easter Bunny? And I sent it to him, and I was like, we have to do it for LB. And, and, he, and he's, like, he's like, what? He's like, only if it's absolutely necessary. And I said, yes, if we would have gotten a second dog, then all my love wouldn't be for that one dog. And then, it's all your fault. Uh, <laughs> so anyways, let's, coming back to the photo stuff. So I, I went to Syracuse, actually, for, for uh, photojournalism. And right. so I, for me, photography, we probably have like 10 cameras between the group here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, my, was my first gift for my father was a, was a camera. I'm a Nikon person. My boyfriend's oh, a Canon person. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a total diehard Nikon person, but I we do have a Canon. We have many Canons. Um, but uh, Renee, what about you? You know, I think I we take, lost Jeff too, but we'll yeah, come I think back. We lost Jeff. I take the world's worst photos. I'm I'm mm. trying to work on my photography, but I Great. find that I just I don't I just don't have the patience for it. Like I I'm kind of like. I want to eat. I don't want to sit here and mm -hmm. wait around yeah. to take photos. So I'm trying to work on that. I also find that I um, end up cooking late at night after I get home when all the natural light is gone. And so yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, if you have any suggestions on that, maybe when we get mm -hmm. to some tips, you can talk a little bit about yeah. that because I find it very frustrating. But I just do the best that I can. But I have to tell you, I have a camera. I'm not even sure I could tell you what brand that camera is. <laughs> Well, I'm obviously, like, it's Renee, about, it's you about need... this big. Does that tell you anything? No, <laughs> the one I replaced is a point and shoot. I mean, it really was, and I took tons. I took thousands of pictures of that point and shoot, and it <clears throat> it really is not the camera. It's what you do with it. Exactly. And you yeah. you know, the one thing I noticed moving up to the camera is exactly why I bought the newer camera is it's mainly optics. It's mainly optics. I can get a nice bouquet in the background. I can have that tight focus, which you can't really get with a point and shoot. And that's something I really enjoy in photos, especially food photography. You're working right. on such tight focal planes there that any anything you do, the, the first set of pictures I shot with that new camera just walking around the neighborhood generated comments immediately when I posted mm -hmm. them to Facebook, wow. simply because of the depth of field. Hey, just so you guys know, we have a ton of people watching on Twitter. Woo! Can we give a can we give a shout out to our Twitter peeps? We got Dessert yeah. Chick, Dessert awesome, Chick. who is here every single week, which we love her. She says, uh, "Gonna join kitchen party late." Oh, wait a minute, she's not even here yet. She's already <laughs> tweeting. I love that. <laughs> she's our, she's like our missing at large tips. correspondent. Exactly. Oh, she's fabulous. We have Gray Haired Lady who's also on Twitter. The WI Veg Gardener is also Joey and Holly. Would like to know. What type of food have you found to be the hardest to photograph? So, Evie, do you, can you? I'd say white rice. Yeah, yeah white rice. Or meat. I, meat can be meat can be real with the cuts great. It can be beautiful, but if it's like if it's a sometimes. Oh my goodness! The other day I had to photograph um, salmon steak, which looks I mean has this looks like legs like somehow like big frog legs, and it was and they wanted an overhead, and that just. <laughs> so the shape was the shape was really hard. Otherwise, brown foods can be very hard. If you have a brown meat with a brown sauce and brown mushrooms, that can be really hard. 
We talked but, with um, our, we've talked with another guest about the the, the whole brown food yeah, problem. Yeah. <laughs> that that can be hard. So then you ha you really have to have a good food stylist who can make the sauce look beautifully running down the meat and Is there maybe there's you do special with lighting to help can you highlight it in some way to make it a little more three-dimensional or yeah, yeah. yeah. If you faced us I can tell <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean sometimes if you have a problem like, like that if you can make a beautiful overhead where you where you maybe the maybe the plate is a white plate with a beautiful brown rim or you have a beautiful glass there so if you can make a graphic by using an overhead that can save you yeah Hey guys, just so you know, we got on Twitter, we have Sandy McKenna is also tuning in. She just tweeted us out. So did Midlife Road Trip. Uh, Simply So Baking is also here. Woo! Ooh, um, La Cuisine Helene has a second question. But before I get to the second question, I just want to also make sure the rest of the folks know we are listening to you on Twitter and also on Google+. And if you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment there as well. Um, and press Jody that French. like button. Oh, press, press, press that like button. That, like that one right there. The one right down, right down there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that like button, right? it really, and I, I the way I see it in my videos, um, that is one direct way that you can express your like for our videos and for the show. It really does help. It directly affects um, videos that are suggested to other people when they're watching other videos on YouTube. So thank you again. We really do appreciate it. So click that like button. I totally agree. So what he said, Dodie French. <laughs> is also on, uh, she's saying that she's also here too at Dessert Party, uh, des uh, I'm sorry, Dessert Chick, she's telling Dessert Chick that she's also here. <laughs> I am so confused. <laughs> we, we appreciate, uh, you know, obviously our, our, our friends. And then I just want to go down the list real quick. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The well, if you Helene. keep checking, I'm going to ask her the next question real quick. Sure, I, okay. I'm, I'm actually really interested in this too. And that is, um, La Cuisine Helene asks, do you use a macro lens? Do you use a 50 millimeter? What do you use for, because with food photography, I assume you're shooting really close. And that's, yep. again, one of, the, one of the other things that I absolutely adore doing is, you know, getting right up on things, whether it's yep. flowers or food. So what, what lenses do you use for that type of work? I love my 100 millimeter 2.8 macro lens. That's just perfect, perfect, perfect. And then I also have a 50 millimeter 1.2, which is great for overheads. And then if I work in a um, if I work in a restaurant, so if it's more um, a little bit more, you know, also getting the um, the chef a chef portrait and getting the environment and people zooming around, I usually if it's so if it's more journalistic in a way, I take my um, what is that? Is that a twenty seven to seventy twenty four to seventy two point eight? Yep. Now, Evie, and, and maybe I missed it, but where do you fall down on the Nikon uh, Canon? Oh, no. 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 And that's the end of our show for tonight. Thank you for joining us. We'll be, uh, we'll be back after this three-quarter of an hour discussion about Nikon versus Canon or Canon versus yeah, Nikon. Yeah. Thank you. You know, honestly, I, I really don't care. <laughs> really? I, if I'm allowed to say that. I can, whatever you give me, I can shoot with. So it, it, they're all, the Canon and Nikon, they're... They're, they're, the cameras are so similar, and if you know you deal with f stuff, you do with aperture, the ISO, you put on the the uh, the lens. I mean, even if you do a phone, I I can work with that. It's fine. I can do it. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so I can hear it. I liken what? that to the, the Nikon Canon wars are likened to the Mac versus PC wars. I just don't fight them anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it really, if, I mean, sometimes if you're really used to one camera and you are, you're, not, you're not a photographer and you're used to all kinds of different cameras, then, um, then it can be troubling to get used to the new camera. Uh, but, you know, if you, if you have shot with both, it's fine. The medium formats, though, that's a whole different story. Yeah, yeah, the that, that takes. It has to be a hustle. Stepping block. it up a notch. Yeah. Can you can you describe <laughs> oh, that a little bit, no, or can you no. tell us what you're talking about? All right. So the 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 most of the cameras that we are talking about right now are the digital SLRs, the oh. digital single lens reflex cameras, and they're all about this size. And the digital negative that they are producing, the sensor, is about this size. It's like called a 35 millimeter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. This is my micro four thirds. It's not really okay, an SLR. That's even, but it's, that's even smaller than yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's, and I bought it specifically for that reason in that it fit well in my purse. Right. Um, right. And, and it's uh, less this is my suspicious. camera. Yeah. And then there are the medium format cameras and they are mainly used indoors in studios and they produce negatives or digital negatives. They have sensors that are really large. So if you are going for high, high end food photography, humongous posters, um, high-end high -end printing, high-end books you would shoot with a medium format camera because you would have more information 
and more megapixels, which, which leads to sharper images. In, Typically you, square, yeah. square format, right? Yeah, they don't. They come in all kinds of shapes. A square is the most is the most classic one, but they also come in rectangular shapes. Yeah, everyone bags on Instagram, but one of the reasons I like using Instagram, and I actually do it with other photos as well, is I actually like the square it's, format. You, it's pretty, and if you yeah. even in Instagram, you can use um, you can post rectangular photos. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be square, but I love Instagram. Yeah, yeah it's great. This this camera is is a, is an Olympus uh, Pan EP one, but actually one of the mm -hmm. features it has, you can set it to sh shoot square. Oh, uh, which is sort of cool. right, right in the camera. So if cool. I'm just wanting to go out and play or something, I'll yeah. do that. I'll set it to square. I'll set it to 16 by 9. I'll, I'll yeah. you know, another reason I got a, a step up of a camera is the having the ability to fiddle around with, to play around with, the, mm -hmm. to fiddle around with shutter speed and exposure and, and, and all this stuff because there really is a lot of, of fun that can be had with cameras mm -hmm. if you get a, just a little more freedom with them. Yep, great. Hey guys, I want to also let, because uh, Twitter is blowing up, uh, YouTube is blowing up. I'm like, I can't even, I'm on NyQuil, so I'm like, I'm going to just follow it as close as I can. If anyone she be has, rolling, if, we be if, hating. That's right. if, every, if anyone has good suggestions on how to cure this flu, please tweet Sweet. it to the Kitchen Pattern hashtag. Um, uh, Hun WFD on Twitter said, I recently got a Nikon Coolpix L310 camera and was wondering the best settings to use for food photographs. That's that's a consumer. That's a. Do you have a, What are the best settings? Because there's like macro. There's daylight. There's is I. You know I don't know all the cameras that exist. So are, do, do you? Does she have the option to put it on manual and set it like set the aperture and the. Um, I believe the cool the has it. I believe speed. it has a slight step yeah. up where you can go into a at least a semi-manual mode. Maybe do aperture. Okay. If you can, if priority. you can go to aperture priority, you can set your aperture at a f.4, aperture 4, and then your camera, because it's aperture priority, controls how long it has to stay open, how long the shutter speed has to be. If it's too dark, you might have to use a tripod, which is, you know, perfectly fine, which is one of the tips I wanted to give you for the, if you have to shoot in the evening when you don't have enough light, if you use a tripod and have a little bit longer of an exposure, you can get you can still get yep. See, I think this should, I think you should be host. You should be answering. Uh, the lovely, the lovely Carol Merrill, and now on the Price is Right. Yeah, this is this is my turn. Yeah, 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 great, 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 great. So yeah, go start with aperture priority, and um, do an aperture of four. See what how long your exposure is. If it's too long, you can also adjust the ISO a little bit. Make the ISO a little higher. Don't go too far. Like then it gets all it gets all grainy and pixelated, and you don't want that. I always go too far. <laughs> yeah. like the crazy Instagram filter person. Uh, on Twitter, we have a couple of things. We have La Cuisine Helene says, um, "I could hear that uh, there's lots of noise here. What type of lens?" Um, she said, "Please, would uh, would you type what kind of lens?" She said, "Please." Now. Okay. It's a, I can tell you again, so it's a 100, this is a professional lens, so when you see the price tag, you're going to fall out the window, so I'm not sure if this is, so let's say, it's a 100 millimeter, 2.8 macro lens. Awesome. And then, La Cuisine Helene said... What might Helene be an said, alternative for okay. maybe a little, a little more cheaply priced? <laughs> Yeah. None. No, 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 no. I think I. Whatever you have is fine. I really believe that. Whatever you have is fine, and you just have to make your camera work. So you know, play with the aperture, play with the um, the f stops, set the ISO as low as you can because then you already get sharper images. But whatever you already have, make it work. Sometimes I people ask me what to buy, what to buy, and then I say, work with what you have. Even if you just have a phone camera, start there. You can do already so many things. You can style the food better. You can, you can put a little bit of extra light in. There's so many things. So don't, you know, first use what you have. And then if you sell yourself, you feel, oh my God, I really, really would love a macro, which just allows you to focus a little bit closer. So a normal lens, you would have your camera here and the object is here. And with a macro, you can have your lens here. So you can just you can go closer to the object. 
Um, if you feel ready for that, then you can get it. But use what you have first, please. Yeah, so I find I that the trouble is that people, if, if people get too functional of a camera, too yeah. early in their photography career, if you will, mm -hmm. it, it's more confusing than it is useful. And they end up getting lots yeah. and lots of lousy shots because they're trying yeah. to play around with it, but they don't understand yeah. basic things like the rule of thirds and framing mm -hmm. and composition and, and all this art-related stuff. You know, I'm assuming your photography degree is probably under the, well, yeah, it's a master of fine arts, you said. Mm -hmm. It is an art form, and I, that's what I've had trouble with people. They get the fancy cameras. It never leaves automatic. Yeah, and it's all it's all practice. It's in the end, it's all practice. It's photos and photos and shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting, and you'll get better even even with your with the same camera you already have. Yeah, so on Twitter we have Lovin Confection, and I don't know if Jeff you were going to say something, but hold on one second. Lovin oh. Confection on Twitter wants to know what is your ideal time of day to shoot. Hmm. So I live on uh, I live on the eighth floor in New York City, and all the buildings around me are pretty low. And my studio faces west, so I can shoot all day until the sun comes around and tries to set in the evening, and then I have to diffuse my light because then I get direct light. So to me, the time of day is not so important because I'm my window light is from west which means that direct sunlight is tricky. Everything that you, if, if you are, if you have a south facing window, put um, some curtain, like some see-through curtains, some shower curtains, or if you already have see-through transparent curtains in the window, to break down the light, to just make it soft and nice. But otherwise, I don't, to me, it's, uh, I can shoot, um, I have to shoot all day long, because the photo shoots that I'm doing for magazines or books, they are, they're all day photo shoots. Now, this is going to be, do you guys have any questions, Jeff, Renee, Douglas? No, you know, I, I think she made a great point, which is I think a lot of people feel pressure to, to really bump up their equipment because they think that the equipment's the reason they're not taking photos. But, you know, I've seen some beautiful photos that people take oh. on iPhones on Instagram, and, you yeah. know, you can, learn, you can learn a lot with basic framing. With even just a, a disposable <laughs> camera, you know, you have to learn the basics of how you, how you use light and how you use angles, mm -hmm. and I think that's an excellent point, Evie. Yeah. My latest trick too is you know you can challenge yourself a little bit. My latest my latest trip out was uh, shooting photos of my sons performing in a, uh, a musical at school, and you know so I sat down before we started and I took one evening I took a bunch of shots and some of them came out okay and then I said oh I needed to turn up my ISO I had forgotten that, and <clears throat> second round it went out up the ISO to a tolerable level because as Evie says things will get too yeah. rainy if you mm. run it too high, but you know what ended up with some really great very, very low light comparatively shots, but very, very sharp, which is what you have to do. Everything in a, in a, in a camera relates to each other. The exposure relates to the shutter, relates to the ISO, right, relates right. to the focal length of the lens. You know, there's all, everything's connected. So when you change one thing, all of a sudden the other things have to change around. Right, right, right. One trick to get around, uh, to get around the grain is if it gets too grainy, make it black and white. Mm-hmm. <laughs> make, it, make, it, make it look like little silver crystals on photography paper. It's exactly. artsy. Is that, they teach you that in art school? That's how you make yeah. it look artsy, huh? <laughs> hey, La Cuisine Helene wants to know, what about processing? Um, and also, Mitch Peters, and Mitch Peters Jones has tuned in. I wanted to say hello. hello. Um, also, so La Cuisine Helene wants to know, what about processing Lightroom 4 or Photoshop CS5? Ooh, okay. So the, again, there are lots of free tools. Is the, if this is a hobby for you, if you're doing it once in a while, there are a bunch of free tools online that you can use. You don't have to spend money. If you want to get more professional, Lightroom is a tool that lets you import the photos, catalog the photos, and do all the ba basic retouching. If you want to get more involved, like swapping out heads or swapping out tomatoes or, you know, <laughs> this, the, the cup cake cream in the one on the left is much better than the one on the right, so you want to swap it out, then you would have, you want to use Photoshop. Photoshop is really uh, um, retouching photo, editing, distortion to the craziness uh, tool. So you can start with Lightroom and you can do the trial. There's, I think there's a 30-day trial and see if you like it. If you have a Mac, iPhoto is great. Works too. 
Okay. And just so you guys know at home, we are going to be going through a presentation with some of Evie's photos. So stay tuned. We're going to be doing that in a couple of minutes. Um, delightful repass. Uh, hopefully I said Thank that right you. on Twitter, um, said, Doug, I just heard of Macro Four Thirds, and you have one. Would I like it? And I, I, I replied back to him, um, <clears throat> the main reason I ended up going with this, uh, I was looking at the Canon T3i, which is kind of a prosumer DL, D, uh, DSLR. Uh, the Nikon products, frankly, are way too expensive for me. Um, the D60, the D50, and all those, are just, they're just too much, and the lens is even more so. Um, and I was going on a family trip to Sicily to visit relatives there, and I had heard about this camera. This is the Olympus Pen EP1, and it fit in my purse, as I said earlier. And that, <laughs> that actually sealed the deal for me because it takes really good pictures. Yes, I do carry a purse. I call it a purse. Where this <laughs> that go. I've explained that in the past. Leave me alone. Um, more, more, more. That, that explains it all. I mean, that's like... That's it. That's it. You know, <laughs> hey, I'm I'm secure in my masculinity. Thank you very much. I've been I've been married for 26 years and I have procreated. So leave me alone. <laughs> um, Wait, the was that a diss? Is that a diss on my singlehood and my non hood? <laughs> I, wait, was wait, wait, you, wait, I was going to tell you. I was going to tell you to have slow. a kid earlier when you were talking about the dogs, but I figured I would be nice and not go there. Uh, there was a question that came up. Oh, light boxes. Uh, and Evie, you, you can chime in on this too, because I wanted to tell uh, Han WFD said in the Twitter, you know, what do we do for light boxes? Go online, YouTube, Instructable. There are thousands of homemade light boxes, especially oh, if you're yeah. doing food, because they can be small if you're doing food. You don't yeah. need a whole studio. Yeah. Um, but there are literally thousands of homemade light boxes that you can make using all sorts of different lighting influence, all sorts of different wax paper or diffusion right. screens right. or whatever. So now I'm assuming you have a, a nicer rig than that though. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Modest. I, I do. But right now natural light is is just the thing to do. It's just it's gorgeous. It's what everybody wants. So I haven't unpacked them in I think three years. Oh wow, so, that's interesting. I, we, so we've we've heard that from other people that the natural light yeah. is is really really becoming important. Right. This person asked specifically because they 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 are like Renee. They they cook at right. night. They don't have a lot right. of natural light. Right. Um, so the one thing that's really important if you do that yourself, and you can even get you can get a work light. You can go to Home Depot or one of those stores and get one of those home lights or IKEA has those clamp on lights, and then whatever. So this you want to put that. Let's say I'm the food, so I'm, I'm the food, and you are the photographer looking at me, so I am the pumpkin, and here is your work light. Then here you want to put some kind of diffusion screen, so wax paper, something that does not burn. Very important. Something I, that's not, not caught on fire. I use, use architectural, well. I use architectural tracing paper. That's what and I use. use a big piece. Don't just use the little 8 by 10 Use something that's big. So if you can build, if you get some, you know, 2 by 2s make a little frame, put some shower curtain that's not going to go up in flames, make a nice frame, and then have the light go through it. So this, it has to be big. So it's really like a window light coming in. And then super important, make sure that, so the light that you'll use is probably a tungsten light, which means it's, it has a yellow, yellow cast to it. So make sure that your camera can be adjusted to, to take away that yellow cast. Yeah, it's called oftentimes, white, white balance. White mm -hmm. balance, yeah. And people, I, you know, people need to know that term because that's the way it's addressed on the camera. Mine yeah. has it. I, if I'm shooting in my kitchen, I have to adjust my white balance. I have a white yeah. cabinet. I point the camera at it. I say, that's white. And then when I take the rest of my pictures, they, it removes the color right. casting that I right. might get from my, the lighting in the kitchen. Exactly. Yeah, that's important. That's important. Otherwise, you go through all this terrible, and then everything is yellow. Uh, and, so on and, Twitter, really, and you can't oh. really undo it either. It's, mm -mm. It's, it's one of those things that you... Yeah, it looks funny. Mm. You can color correct it, but it's very, very difficult to get it back to normal. Yes, mm. about that. Hello, is anyone listening to me? No, no. <laughs> were, were you saying something about that? We're having a photography discussion over here. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is McAllen. This is like my... This is it. She so, used an accent. She said McCallum. Actually, <laughs> Evie has an accent all night long. Yeah, she breaks the rules. She, she breaks, breaks the rules. She, she, yeah. she makes it so we can't do any of our, our drinking oh, games. So you can to everyone, morning. let's just have all a toast to sure. one. To everyone who's watching on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, 
Instagram, <laughs> wherever you're watching, we adore you. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say that La Cuisine Helene wants to know, um, trend is dark food photography. How to take a good dark picture? Is this a different technique? What background, etc.? Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it, ma it makes sense. Okay, all right. So here's the here's a good idea. Take a wooden board, like three feet by three feet, and get chalkboard paint. You can get that also at Home Depot. Paint that wood chalkboard. That's and then rough it up a little, like get a little. Um, I, I forgot what that's called, but these um, sandpaper. Sandpaper, exactly. So sandpaper, make a little roughy, rough looking, and then put your make a nice overhead shot. So arrange your food in there. The exposure is 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 the kind. It's the same as if you had a white background, but your camera is since it's all dark. Your camera your camera wants to wants everything to be medium gray. So your camera, when it looks at this black background, it tells you, oh, make it brighter, make it brighter, make it brighter, but that's not correct. So the exposure, if it's a light background or a dark background, this, I know this gets a little geeky, but um, I'm just <laughs> telling you, what, what, what I want to say is that if you're shooting the black, your camera will tell you, you, you have to get lighter, 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 but that's not, that's not correct. So you will have to look in the, on the screen and just make a judgment and don't follow your camera because it will drive you nuts. You need to stop yeah, it down and actually most cameras even in automatic mode will have a very easy way to mm. to stop down just a stop or a half or a, a full stop. <laughs> we'll, now we're uh, losing half of the audience because yes. it gets so yeah. <laughs> well, the, the, I, It's very paint. funny. Yeah. But you're that, using I, that board underneath the food like you're putting the food on yeah. top of that? Yeah. yeah there's actually a great shot on your blog I saw recently you had you had a photo with the chalkboard and mm -hmm. the handwritten words Ooh, underneath Yeah, it, yeah, there was citrus. The that was for um, oh. last month. Yeah. Yes. Right. We so need just to, to get photos. Photos. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to get to that, but I want to get through some Twitter stuff, too, because <laughs> people are on. They want to know their answers now. They yeah, want to yeah. get on with their lives. Yes. So Questions Dessert first. Chick said she just tuned in. Welcome. We've been waiting for Welcome. you. It's been, it's been forever. Okay. So I'm going to go through. Uh, Stephanie Cohen is on YouTube. She is sending messages of love. She's saying, great job, guys. Um, Let's see. Uh, Hun WFD says, "I've been thinking about making a light box for when I don't have to act when I don't have access to natural light. What type of lighting would be best?" All right. Again, so if you can make a do-it-yourself light box, perfect. Um, then there are also ways where you can, if you have strong, like this is a nice way of doing it. If you have a desk light or a strong light at home, if you can point it. To, onto a white wall and then just pretend that that white wall is your window. So you have all this light coming, reflecting off the wall to you. It's nice bounce. And, exactly. It's a nice bounce. And then you want to make sure, so let's say that if this is your, this is your food, the bounce comes from here, your food's here, then you can also have a little reflector here to bounce some light back on this side and then you also have some nice lighting. Yeah. The, the, the harsh light is the problem. If you take your, your desk light and point it right onto the food, um, that's, that's trouble. It's all about modeling. It's all, mm -hmm. The trouble with photography is you're taking a 3D object and you're making it a flat two-dimensional thing. It's like painting. Mm -hmm. And so you have to model the object that you're dealing with. You want light from pretty much three angles if you can get it. That's hence the, the bounce light, the reflector light, maybe mm -hmm. an overhead light. And what it makes it do, do it makes the picture appear three-dimensional again. Uh, it kind of takes what the camera's doing and helps it do it better. So on Twitter, <laughs> this is crazy. I cannot keep up with these people. You people are just talking way too much. So we're going to get to this presentation, I promise. But I figure these people are important. We want to make sure they're happy. Uh, Jody Finch says, refuse to upgrade my equipment. See many struggles with more expensive cameras, maybe too soon. You know, yeah. I feel your pain. I think we all feel your pain. Yeah. So let's let's all let's all raise a toast yeah. to Jody yeah. Fritch and yeah. tell you we will be there for you when you decide to make that leap. Yeah. Uh, Dutch Baker Girl is also, by the way, Evie, you will be drinking a lot on this show before you get to your presentation, which will make your presentation. Even Interesting. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> um, Dutch Breaker Girl says, "How important are props for food photography?" At Douglas Welch, European carry-all. 
No, it's a, no, it's a purse. It's not a handbag. It's not a purse. It's not a European satchel. It, it, it's know. a satchel. Just say it's a satchel. It's okay. <laughs> well, the trouble. Okay, here's here's the joke. For a while, my wife and I carried the same purse. Oh. <laughs> And did you have so, monograms? Like, did um, you have your... Okay, I'm out. I did, have, I, did, <laughs> I did have an earlier satchel type bag that did have monograms on it from the little bean. When I, so the, basically, it comes from carrying all the electronics and stuff I carry, plus the photos, plus the photography. Between the iPhone and, and I used to have to carry three or four devices around between a phone and a PDA and all these things, so... Uh, and the cables and stuff now. So, yeah, I, I started carrying a bag a long time ago, and you know what? People really haven't given me much stuff about it. <laughs> okay, so Except going back, are food, pro are food props important? <laughs> are food props important? <laughs> yes, you have a lovely purse in the background yep. with a monogram on it. It's very important for a prop, right? Really nice. I <laughs> Once you get to a more professional level, it really makes the shoot. I mean, it really makes a big difference that you have somebody, even yourself or a prop stylist, who thinks about all the props. If you do not have the props, if you don't have access to the props, just keep it simple. Just, you know, get like a white plate, a nice glass, some nice silverware. That's all you need for the start. Is I have to plate? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Jeff. That was a three-car pile up. <laughs> yeah, really? Um, Go ahead. I, have to, I wanted to compliment you, Evie, because there's a photo, and I'm not sure what it is because I can't pull it up right now, but there's a photo of like a jar full of white fluid on a white background. Mm -hmm. You would think that that would be one-dimensional, but the way that you lit it and the yeah. shadows made it so vivid, and I just mm -hmm. I wanted to applaud you for that. That's mm -hmm. really hard to do. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm the only one clapping. Come on. Let's some... Come on, around, around, around. Jab hands. <laughs> How did, you, how did you do it? <laughs> I think you, you're talking about the, the glass that's empty. Or that's, yeah, right. So that was on a windowsill, and I just had one reflector on the other side. She's giving away and, all her secrets here. Yeah, I mean, it's, really, it's super simple. It's super <laughs> simple. It's, you just have to see it. That's the trick. You just yeah. have to get, you know, look for it and see it. Evie, where can people go to find that picture? They can see it. On, I want to say it's on Whip and Click, my um, dessert seasonal treat blog. And I am pretty sure that it is, was last month, we focused on citrus and yogurt. And I think it's uh, there. So if you scroll down a little, you'll see it. Yeah. I'm going to see posted, if I can uh, find that and then send it to Melody. So maybe we can oh, pull cool. that up, okay? Mm -hmm. I just That'd posted a link to the blog there, too. So. Oh, oh awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, teams. Uh, Heritage Cook says, uh, Kitchen Party, I also take my shots late after making dinner and love my EGO lights for nighttime shooting. That's great, too. There are, there are some nice um, video lights as well that you can use. And if you can, you can use those and diffuse them or bounce them against the wall. That's even better. Just make them soft. Yeah, EGO. I'm sorry. I'm going to ask, what's that acronym mean? <laughs> I haven't heard that before. Anybody? Know. Any idea? <laughs> okay. Is that the yogurt and jam photo. Google it. I, I actually have I those, could... and I think it's a brand name. To be honest with you. Oh, okay. That's that. I wasn't sure. It sounded like an acronym, so I wasn't yeah. sure. And everyone's retweeting your website, by the way, which is awesome. So people, yeah, thank you, Douglas, for putting that out there, thank so we you. can see. Um, on Twitter, at Trini Soul Cooks wants to know my food photo. My food pics come out lousy. I use a Canon EOS Digital Rebel T XT1, which I actually have that as well. Mm -hmm. um, either too much light or not enough. What do I do? Um, I do a lot with food photos. What do I do? What's okay. my problem? It sounds like that you haven't quite mastered the uh, understanding the aperture. ISO shutter speed relationship. So I wonder if this person always puts it on automatic, then sometimes, like I said, the camera can be tricked. It doesn't. It's not like our eyes. So it, it measures things incorrectly, and then it gives you the the wrong exposure for what you want. So if you can learn how to use these three settings: the ISO, the aperture, and the um, shutter speed. 
And I'll throw in again, too, there, there's a very basic setting built into all cameras, even an automatic mode where you can just stop down exposure like one or two stops mm-hmm. and stop up. That's where I started because even the point and shoots have those. And you'll be so surprised. I know I was when I did it. Just, oh, oh, I took that a stop down. Oh, my gosh, it looks so much better. Nicer, well, yeah. well, well, why didn't I know about that before? Or, yeah, if, you know, yeah. if it's too dark, stop it up a half, a half step or, or a full step. And to me, that's, that was my in to that world of understanding exposure, aperture, right, right, and all right. those things. And now with the digital cameras, you can just see it on the back. You don't, mm-hmm. you don't even have to develop your film anymore. You can see it right away. So just play, play, play. Take lots of photos. I, I don't know if they mm-hmm. told I mean, you were you were probably coming through college in the year in the age of film, but yeah. for me, digital has been so wonderful because I mean people laugh about how many photos we take, but that's what I do. I take a lot of photos and I will play around and I don't feel bad not playing around with the with the photos because it's not costing me anything extra. I can experiment. And everyone out there should experiment. It's not costing you in developing or any of that stuff. Renee and Jeff, do you guys take a lot of digital photos? I know, Renee, you said you're the worst camera person ever, but I'm sure you take a lot. Oh, you got mic You got muted. Oh, <laughs> I love seeing your face when you realized it. <laughs> I, I take thousands of photos of my iPhone, but they're not very good. But, Babette, I want to get to photos. We want to get to photos. We want to get know, to critique. I know. I want to. Okay, okay, there's only four more things on Twitter, and then I will oh, stop. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Judy Fit- but these people are important to us. They're no, like, Twitter is fine. The rest of us have to stop talking. Makes me sad when restaurants invite... Okay, so Jody Fit- Fritch on Twitter says, Makes Hi, me Jody. sad when restaurants invite bloggers in, but don't provide a photo station for us to take pictures at. Mm. I, I agree. I agree. I think we yeah. should all raise a toast to her. I think Great we should idea, all Jody. Do Every restaurant should do that. And then also Corianda, who is fantastic, on Twitter says, looks like it's a poppin' kitchen party. <laughs> Tune in now. She'd be late. Okay. The NyQuil has kicked in. And then Dessert Chick, the McAllen. Um, I, McAllen is like my thing. I don't know what it is. It's terrible. Um, Dessert Chick says, <laughs> photo JoJo. Oh, there goes that sponsor. <laughs> and the spotlight thingy that goes on your iPhone jack to light up your dark restaurant photos. Hmm, interesting. I usually use other people's iPhones to like yeah. light <gasps> pictures. On That's the technology strange. side, this week a big thing in all the blogs was a little tiny LED light pad, like you've seen the bigger ones they've come out with for videography and stuff. Mm-hmm. They have a little tiny one that plugs into your headphone jack yep. specifically for the iPhone and other smartphones. Right, right. Again, if you can find a way, there are all kinds of gadgets for the iPhone now too, if you can find a way to bounce it off or diffuse it and make the light softer, because it just a harsh light on food just looks horrible. It looks like 1980 or something. It just is not. Is that not Giddy. pretty? <laughs> my, the sweetness of my college years summed up to harsh lighting. Okay. So, uh, so th- I never use my flash. I never so while use Melody, flash. well, I, I'm gonna cut you off, Douglas. I'm sorry. Um, while no, no, Melody no. cues up our thing for our presentation, which is our, all of our. That's why we're all here. I wanted to let. Uh, on Twitter, Lee McGrath RD says that she is tuned in. Hoo, hoo, hoo. And also, Love and Confection says, love the chalkboard paint idea. I know my DIY projects for this week, what it's going to be. All Absolutely. Right. That's what she, Kitchen Party is for, people. That's right. All right. So Melody's <laughs> going to put Cameraman on, and she's going to go into the presentation, which took us 50 minutes to start, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's the McAllen talking. Okay. No. I'm going to go back. These, these awesome people on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. I will just... say this has been the most most question-intensive Twitter <laughs> chat we've had, Evie. You, you, have, you have brought out the, uh, the photography buff. That yeah. is for sure. I hope I've given some answers. Help. Yeah. We're yep. going to have you back. We're going to have to come okay. back a second time. See my this notes. Awesome. Okay. See all the answers. See these. <laughs> <laughs> it, if okay. only for Douglas, we have to have you back. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, and we have I'm, to give we have to give you a camera. We'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> so Melody, do you want to advance to the next um, picture? We'll do the first the first tip. These are five tips for better food photography. Just so you mm-hmm. all know. All right. So okay. All right. So. I know a lot of people talk, like to talk about tools and geeky things and all these things, <laughs> but I think the first thing that you should keep in mind is figure out what you're going for. Figure out what you want to do. Like, keep it consistent. 
I mean, if you're just a hobbyist here and there, who cares, right? But if you are a blogger or if you are, if you want to put up your book on Bakespace, <laughs> then uh, yeah, just think about what you, what, how, what's your style? Do you want to shoot an editorial? Like up there, there's one shoot of a you know Turkish tea. Is it like a nice soft light background? Then is it more um, action shots where you have hand inside and it's a messy thing and things are going on, or is it clean and simple? So think about what the style. What's the style of your blog? What are you trying to do? First thought. Okay, and then the next slide I have here is the prepare your shoot. Again. If, if you just here and there want to take a little photo, it, it really doesn't matter. But if, you are, if you're working on a project or if you're working on a blog that should have a voice to it, that your pictures should look consistent, think about it. So get inspired. Go on Pinterest or on Instagram, wherever you want to go. Pinterest is perfect because you can put all your own boards, inspiration boards together. So if you are a blogger and your subject is pasta, for example, look for some inspiration shots. All of the big food magazines Saveur, Food and Wine, Bon Appetit, they all post photos there. So you have this wealth of inspiration. And you don't have to stand in your kitchen and then come up with things out of nowhere. Nobody does that. <laughs> Everybody you know, gets inspired. So it doesn't copy, but gets inspired right? by, um, by other people and other shots. So look what they're doing. See how they're stacking up the plates. See where they put the spoon, where, put, where they put the fork, how the food is arranged. Then um, set up the scene. So there are some bloggers that are really successful by, uh, they're always shooting on the same countertop. I think Smitten Kitchen or so is one of them. She always, she has this um, signature style countertop. It's this black with the white speckles. So once you see a photo of hers, you know it's her. So it's branding right in there. So think about it. Do you want to use the chalkboard? Do you want to use the whiteboard? Um, what kind of backgrounds do you want to use? What kind of props do you want to use? Um, do you have everything that you need? Do you need to run over to the neighbor and get another white glass or cup or so? <laughs> can, I can I borrow a cup of sugar? <laughs> yeah, please, please, for my shoot, for my shoot. So just take a little time and then you have it set for your next shoots. So if you're always shooting in the evening, you kind of you know what you're doing. You know where to set the lights. You know what background you use. You know what you're going. Then style the food. 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 <laughs> super, super important. <laughs> and there are gazillions of books out there where you can learn how to make your food look better. There are some there are some things that you can't just just photograph. For example, the food stylist they. They ne most of the time, they don't cook the pasta all the way through. They let it be stiff so it holds up in the shot. It doesn't collapse or, on itself? Yeah, exactly. It doesn't uh, like fall over all, all the way. Oh. So there are lots of little tricks that you can learn. There are gazillions of blogs out there that cover that or also books. Um, style the food, which means a little tricking. I guess you can still eat it. It's all good, but uh, just a little tricking. Also, for example, again, if you make a pasta, Try to make the sauce look run, like run down on one side. Or if you do an overhead shot, make sure that your plate is really clean and that you have arranged your food in a, graphically and not in a big blur. blur. <laughs> one also, another great trick for food photography is, you know, a regular American plate is pretty large. Use a smaller plate. It really looks nicer. And most food photographers, if you flip through magazines or so, you will see that the plates are, they are smaller. They might look like a regular serving, but they are usually smaller because then a, a blob of uh, mashed potatoes looks just much nicer in a little pile instead of a humongous pile. So on the next slide, I have, um, what do I have there? Adjust your light. So here we go. There is the window light. Most beautiful window light. If you have a north facing window, you are a winner because you'll never have to deal with harsh light coming in. Otherwise, you just put some, um, there are, there's some stuff you can buy at Home Depot also. There are screens that you can put right onto the window. The ones that you would have in your bathroom, for example. 
those uh, don't you, you so you can't see into the window you can put that or you can put a shower curtain or something in front of the window light so it diffuses it then there's one shot where you can see the window light coming in and lots of whiteboards to the side and to the back those are reflectors you can use white cardboard you can go to a photo store and buy a professional um, piece if you want but those are reflect the reflectors. All, aluminum foil can be in a reflector. A mirror can be a reflector. So you're getting some light back in. And then the other one is, uh, right, exactly. So the next slide is um, play with your camera. Whatever you have is great. It, you know, don't think about the next camera you might be getting or the next thing you might be buying, whatever you have. If it's a camera phone, if it's a pinhole camera, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's, it really is the, use what you have right now. You can always, once you really feel the need, try to borrow maybe first. There are lots of camera stores online also where you can borrow cameras for a weekend. They send it to you and you test it out and you send it back. So, but play with your camera. Don't put it on auto all the time. Try, work with the aperture priority and see what that does. And since you have the digital screen in the back, you can see it right away. Play with your ISO, play with all these settings. And what are you holding up there, Douglas? I'm just showing the <laughs> dial, I'm showing the dial oh, on mine, right. you know, as far as, you know, the different modes that are available to you. There's lots of, lots, lots of fun stuff available yeah, there. Yeah. Play around with it. Then could we, on could the, we go back to the previous yes. slide? Could you just go through the, cook, the yes. cookie photos? Yes, I'll do that. And I, I also just wanted one thing. If you do a lot of overhead shots or if you do shoot in darker environments, I mean, I know, of course, in a restaurant that might not be possible, if, but if you can do this at home, use a tripod. That's uh, great because then you can have, you can lock down your camera. You can, even you can get a tripod for your phone too. Um, you can lock down your phone, your tripod, your camera, and you can adjust the food. You can do, take a shot and then you see, oh my goodness, you know, that, uh, that plate looks hideous. And then you just turn it upside down or do something so you can arrange it a little bit. So tripods mm -hmm. are great for arranging. Then on the bottom, I just put two samples for, um, <laughs> <there's>, <laughs> Douglas, you're too funny, <laughs> the illustrated version of my talk. Um, then on the bottom, you see... Uh, there is one, the cookie stack that says white balance. And what you should be seeing is on one side a uh, perfectly white background and on the other side a yellow background. This is what we talked about before. Make sure that you understand the white balance in your camera. Look for that, Google it, and find out how you can maneuver your camera into understanding what the right white is in that situation. Sometimes what the trouble also can be is that if you have a, multiple light sources, if you have window light and overhead, like, tongue, like the yellow light, the tungsten light, then you have the blue light from the window and the yellow light from the top, and that is a mess and confuses the camera even more. So turn off the light that you can turn off, the, the ceiling light, and just use the window light and bounce it back. If you have different... I know I'm going to lose again the half of the audience, but if you have different light temperatures, different light colors... That also makes the photo ugly, and it's very, very hard to correct later on. And if you want then, an object example of that, look at my picture. Because oh, yeah. something I fight, <laughs> this is yes. a fluorescent light. Yes. That's natural light. The webcam yeah. freaks out, and I turn yeah. orange and blue various yeah. as I go. And that's just something I have to deal with here in the office. But Well, you need exactly to. Do you have some camera. blinds on your window lights? There are no blinds on those windows. Then so get a right. desk light that has a, na that has a, is a balance to the. Um, you know, yeah. you know, I yeah. don't have to tell you. Yeah. No, it, 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 it freaks out. And, and actually, even with that, it, it'd be hard. I, I have to find something that matches that light, or I have to yeah. block that light. Yeah. yeah. But that there is an object. Some... What they're seeing right here is an object example of that. Right. And in fact, if I do this, you'll notice all of a sudden my lighting goes back to kind yeah. of yeah. normal-ish. It's because yeah. it stops fighting. It stops seeing that right, color. Right, 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 right. Yeah. There are some bulbs that are um, daylight balanced. So you have to find the daylight balance. So on the other side, there's exposure. And um, it just said, uh, so the exposure is corrected by ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. ISO is the light sensitivity of your digital... Um, of your digital camera and you can adjust it lower or higher. You can make it more sensitive so you can shoot in lower light. Shutter speed is the, the time that the lens stays open 
and that controls the motion blur. If you have a very short shutter speed, it freezes everything. If you have a very big, long shutter speed, then you get this motion blur in your photos. An aperture controls the depth of field. So if you have a very open aperture, you have a very shallow depth of field, which means there's only one plane in focus, just my eyes and everything is blurry. And if you have a very little aperture, then everything is sharp. And the last slide I have is... Um, I'm going to interrupt just a little bit, Evie, just to show. We sure. talk because while we're still on this slide. Yeah. This is a little tripod. You have tripod. all the gadgets. Wow. I don't, I don't have that many gadgets, but I do have the ones that I use a lot. And this yeah. is a little iPhone holder. That's the great phone just clips into it. And this is just a little tripod. Tripods, you won't believe how much better your mm. phones will get if yeah. you use a tripod. It will, it will blow you away entirely. Yeah, yeah. And if you are, if you're using that, for example, if you go to a restaurant that's dark and you want to get a nice shot of the food and you want to use, you have that tripod, you can have a longer exposure so you can get, you can capture more of the light that's around it. And Make sure that when you hit your camera button, you don't go like this, but bam, because then you shake everything up again. So, there are, and mm. well, here's another, one of the tricks I use too, both yeah. in my big camera and my small camera is, is if there is a, uh, an auto timer on it. Right. You set the auto timer for 10 seconds, then it, it you hit the button and it kind of dampens, has 10 seconds to dampen yes. out any movement before it takes a picture. Yeah, yeah that's a great important. tip. Very important. Mm -hmm. Now, do I have permissions to share this PowerPoint presentation on um, Twitter? Is that okay if I like share a link to this? Yeah, that's okay, fine. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. I'll, yeah. I'll add that to our, our, I'll go back and add that to the blog post, but I'll, I have uploaded it now and I'll actually share the link now. I just wanted to make sure I yeah. can do that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, great. And then my last slide here is so um, you can edit your cam, you can edit your photos. There are a bunch of cameras that let that let you edit um, your photos inside the camera already. There's a bunch of cameras that let you crop or resize or change uh, all kinds of settings. You can do that in camera. You can also do that with an app, for example, um, Hips. Hipstamatic or Instagram or all there are gazillions of apps you can use. You can put all kinds of effects on it. You can use uh, there are some free online editing tools. I think one of them is called Pixel. Pixlr. P I X L R. Pixlr, exactly. Pixlr. Yeah, that's great. Or you can you know if you want to you can buy the big big guns, the Lightrooms and the ap uh, the um, apertures or Photoshop. And then don't forget to share the photos with the world. <laughs> put them on your blog, put them on Pinterest, on Facebook, on Instagram, send them out there. And I shared my Flickr. Yeah, I shared my Flickr photo stream just a bit ago. To, I figured people want to see what the camera that I have can take. That's the perfect example for them. They can see actual photos that I took under, you know, real world situations mm -hmm. with it. Evie, oh. where are all the places that we can see your photos? Uh, well, I think my, my website is down here. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's the most central part, and from there you can click uh, click on the blog and um, go to Whip and Click. Mm -hmm. And you want to do Instagram, Pinterest, all those places. Yes, yes, and you can find that all from my website. I want to. So I I know we're we're talking. I'm talking a lot, but I just wanted to add one more um, little thing, which is. Um, you, another way, on your blog, for example, if you want, or your book, if you want to make your photos look like they hang together, they are one voice, you can also work with always use the same frame. There are some apps that you can use and throw on always a black frame, or always a white frame, or always a pink frame on your photos. Or you can always, I saw one blogger who always cut off one corner of their images. So it became their signature style of always there's one corner cut off. Another blogger always used circular images. So it became a style and recognizable. That's a very cool little trick. So here is my whip and click, which is my um, the food blog. I'm writing with pastry chef Alban Sharad. I just saw a question pop up in the Twitter feed too. Do you shoot in raw? And this is again a geeky thing. But always do you shoot raw. In raw or JPEG? You shoot in raw. Uh, well, with the big cameras, always raw. With um, the um, phone. I think whatever it does, JPEGs, right? Yeah. Yeah, but always much, yeah. raw or, because or it PNG. gives you, yeah, it gives you more um, opportunity to uh, 
adjust later on. Yeah. Well, that also ties into Instagram, too. One of the big complaints about Instagram early on was, well, it messes up your photo and doesn't save the original. Well, guess what, guys? Instagram will save your original photo in its original format with no doctoring at all if you turn on that option in the program. So you still have that original photo that you can fiddle with later if you wish and still post the fun photo to Facebook mm -hmm. or wherever. Evie, what is that background? Is that actually that's on the that? chalkboard? That's the that's chalkboard. chalkboard. That's the one I was the honest one. And then do you just wipe it clean? Yep. That's yep. great. I like that. It's really beautiful. It's a chalkboard right against the window, and um, one reflector. And it's just. Was that an overhead shot or that, a face-on shot? That was. Well, it had to be an overhead shot, yeah, because everything yeah. Had to slid down. Duh. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Those have to be overhead shots. That was our Valentine's post. How do you get an overhead shot like that? Um, are you leaning your tripod out? Are you handhelding it over it? Or, or This one was handheld because we had enough light, so I was just standing on top of the chalkboard. But I, for my tripod, I have what's called a crossbar. Mm -hmm. So it's the tripod is here, and then there's a bar on top, and you can mount the camera here facing down. Because sometimes if you mount it here and you just point the head down, you will always get your the tripod legs mm -hmm. in the photo. Or, or you get parallax where the, line, the yeah. lines no longer meet and all that weird yeah. stuff. Yeah. I have that problem with some stuff I do. Mm. Evie, I think those much. are such oh, great cool. tips that are very, you know, I, I feel so inspired now as Good. somebody who barely, you know, knows which end of the camera to look into. I feel like you've given me lots of great suggestions without yeah. feeling like Another. I have to go out and spend a million dollars. Yeah. You, and another great thing to do, try angles. You know, try... Um, change your point of view like you can shoot head on you can shoot from the top you can shoot you know from a little lower just play around have have some fun overhead i love overheads because then you you can really take advantage of the graphic elements of the plates usually they're round oval or square so you can really play with those and crop them off and don't be scared of cropping the food doesn't have to be in the center you can crop it all the way to the side yeah, yeah, and, you, you know, with the rule of thirds, if you don't know what that is, go ahead and look it up. It's, you'll yeah. find tons of resources online. And Instagram, I'm not sure if Instagram has it or not, but a lot of the iPhone photo apps actually have a grid that you can lay out, you can turn on over your photos. It doesn't appear in the photo, but will give you the, the third grid of the photo, and you can actually use it to line up shots and place them in their more, most advantageous position in the actual photo for your composition. Evie, so, you don't hey, seem to be one of those cool. photographers who's upset by the use of filters and elaborate kind of toying with, toying with photos. I know at the paper there are a lot of photographers who, yeah. who are very upset about that. They do not like that. They feel like it, it uh, dis is distorting reality in the image. But you seem to enjoy encouraging people to be creative. Yeah, yeah whatever, whatever looks good. And, you know, photography distorts reality. Already, <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> so in, in a talk I gave uh, about internet being an internet skeptic, I I showed pictures that had been doctored, but they were pictures from the late 1800s. Mm -hmm. Photography yeah, has lied since it was created, been. and and you must be remembered there are certain options where you don't want it to lie. You want to present a very yeah. journalistic opinion of it, but yeah. Um, yeah. there are other times you know you should. It is an art form. Yeah. Jeff, and do it, you find that some photographers are also don't well, like you that. know, it's yeah, I do, but that you know, you and I hang around news photographers, and you know, if uh, if there isn't blood coming from the frame, then there was no murder, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's you know, they they are ultra ultra realists, and they actually some of them get fired for even small doctoring of photos. Oh yeah. Um, and so that's an issue, but you know, I would I would do what you know, like for instance, I I, uh, I love Evie's photos, so what. I think I would suggest is for people to try and and you know maybe set up like maybe just even one of what she has on her yep. site and, and not necessarily imitate well yeah imitate it but you can see how hard it is to do and also how easy because then you get to make your own little adaptations to it and it's sort of like how you learn to be a good writer you find a writer that you like and you sort of imitate the style and then you find a way to make it your own so um, I, I I just think your your photos are just so elegant. Um, I wish I could find a way to make mine that that uh, <laughs> that easily simple. Uh, looking well, well, I know that it's not simple. I know that it takes a lot of practice, yeah, like you said. Yeah, and a lot of them, it's not only me. I mean, just a lot of them. There are stylists and prop people, and so yeah. We talked about this in another show, Evie. And one of the things about you can make food look too good sometimes.
Yes. Where, where it becomes impossible for the person reading the cookbook or reading the yeah. article to, to actually duplicate it. How do, what do you feel about that? Yes, yeah. There has been, just on a recent shoot, um, I was shooting some images for, for Food and Wine magazine and I had a discussion with the editor about that, that, you know, we can make it look gorgeous and wonderful, but the people who will follow the recipe, it will not, it just will not look like that. But then we have to keep in mind that we want to, the photos that we're making, we want to entice people and most of the people also know that if it's in a magazine, that's not, it will, you know, it, it's just, that's not gonna, what it's gonna look like for my dinner. Um, uh, but I have seen um, some images, if you go through the supermarket, if, if you see images on frozen food packages, that packaging photography, those strawberries, they are just, I mean, I know that they, are, they have to be real because that's one of the laws, you have to shoot what's in the package, blah, 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 but they're so photoshopped that, or all those chocolate commercials where the chocolate just blur, you know, that's, yeah. that's just not reality at all, and, and I don't know. Yeah, there's a whole website dedicated to showing what fast food looks like on the, yes. know, on the menu exactly. <laughs> and in reality. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, been there, done that, seen yeah. that. So, uh, uh, I bet you're jumping in. And an awkward pause. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. You're, you're muted, muted now, Babette. Babette. You're muted, you're yeah, muted, Babette's muted. muted. She was being kind and muted herself, and then we made fun of her. <laughs> Darn. Nope, you're still muted. You're still, oh, she's still muted. muted. I think I should do the voice. Hello, 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 hello. She heard you were going to do the voice, and immediately I'm <laughs> I'm drinking. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You know, one day I will look back on these videos, and I'll be like, I'm Jim the Jim founder Jim. of a startup. <laughs> Watch me get drunk. <laughs> Hey, we're having a great time. What can you say? I do want to show, I do have some images of, um, and now I'm trying to figure out where they are. I have some images here that I want to share. Mm -hmm. um, can you guys see that? Let me know if when you guys can see that. Hello, 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 hello. Okay. Can, can you see these pictures from Kitchen Party? Yep. Oh, wow, look at that. Ooh, wow. So we invited our fans to upload recipes. Now, I, I confess some of them are mine because I was like, <laughs> oh, I have all these great food photos. I need, I'm need. i going to share them. Did so, you put the ones we sent to you? No. Oh, okay. I sent yes. mine directly to Melody, so. <laughs> oh, we, we, can have, we can have Melody pull them up in a second. Yeah. Um, but let me, let me go to some of our, our friends, and these are people who – who actually submitted. Now, I don't know if these open on their own. Oh, I guess they do. Oh, mm -hmm. So <clears throat> this is like a really, um, a Dara, who is on Google+, Plus, uh, posted this picture. I find it really interesting because it's, it's like so dainty, but also probably so rich in flavor. Like it just, mm -hmm. I don't know what it evokes, but it evokes like, for me, spicy food. <laughs> and then yeah. I run. <laughs> yes. So what do you think about stuff like this? I think, okay, so I'm going to be like, I'm going to be harsh right uh -oh. now, right? Uh -oh. That's okay. <laughs> so I'm going I'm to be real, so I'm sorry if this, so uh, first thing, I see that the white's not white, it has this, what I was talking about, this yellow tint, so I would love if, um, I just want to make sure, D Dara, is that Dara? Mm. Yeah. If Dara could figure out on her camera how she can adjust her white balance, so white's white and not um yellow. Then if she, I, I don't know if she made the food or if the food was served to her, but if, if Dara, if you made the food, you know, you, there are the spices that are sprinkled on top, they are, there are, there's a lot of spice up there. So if, if you don't put them all over everywhere, but just maybe on one side, so I can, I can see a little bit of that yellow, I'm going to say sauce, but it's not sauce, um, the, the liquid that's underneath, if, and if the spice could come on one side, that would be great. Also in the background, I see a lot of pattern, and I think I see a like some silver reflections there, and they are so out of focus that they just distract me. So I would just want to see maybe just a plain white or one glass with a plain white, but there's a lot of stuff that I don't know what it is, and it distracts me. But I love the focus otherwise. It's a nice angle. It's a nice focus. I just try to get the 
white balance right and then if that is a paper napkin take out the paper na napkin but I can't really see it's a little hard to mm -hmm. see let's see if I can find another one let's see sorry is it I'm sorry I don't want to you know no 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 it's great it's great. I just want to no, be no, great. Uh, honest well you, you mentioned there focus is so important you have to have at least one point of sharp yeah. focus you yeah. can I yeah. like that depth of field of having something out of focus but you you sometimes right, with right, my right. camera I have to specifically tell it I yeah. want to focus there in the yeah. frame that's yeah. what I want in focus and you have yeah. to <clears throat> you have to be for lack of a better term smarter than your camera sometimes yeah. and say no yeah. I know you want to focus there but I want to focus here all right yeah so does somebody else want to talk about this one, or I'm the one who's... <laughs> yeah, you, who's you're, the pro. You're, the, you're the expert. <laughs> we have to come back next week, Evie. You go ahead and be the bad girl. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm going to get hate mail. No, no, no hate mail. Not at all. No. You, know, you know what? This has been hugely valuable to me, and I'm, I, I take terrible photos all the time, so I'm hoping that it will actually change what I do. So then, I'm not going to hold back. And so, this, <laughs> <laughs> so this is... This I like. And I think this could have been like super nice from the top. Do you see, you know, stand up? I mean, if this, if you, if this is your kitchen table or maybe your family, you know, stand up on a chair or on the table if it's possible, and um, take it. This would be really nice from the top because you have all these different um, greens. You have these white walls. The white balance here is nice. It's mm -hmm. the whites are white. That's great. Um, here you can see how the camera catches everything. See how the bowl, the sauce bowl in the front is the, the rim is a little dirty. And also the meat, I think the meat that's there, um, the sauce, meat, the rim of that plate is also a little dirty. Messy is great, but uh, if you photograph messy, it's so hard because you have to control it so much. So just cleaning out the bowls uh, a little bit, arranging the salad so it kind of curves maybe all in the same direction. Looking that like would be it great. just doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, the yeah. The effortless, um, it's very hard to make it look effortless and it's very, very hard to make something look messy and appetizing. Mm -hmm. But this, I, I, li I like that there's lots going on and this will be a great overhead. Mm -hmm. So Mel, I don't know if Melody has a cameraman on or anything, but I'm just going to, I'm going to talk for a second just so that my image goes full screen so anyone who's watching at home in case, in case you don't see that. Um, let me go to another, let me go to another, okay, I'll go, I'll go to, um, what do, you guys, what do you guys want to see? Hey, Babette. Yeah? Uh, let me make a point while you have it here. Sure. If you scroll, you can kind of see what Evie's talking about because there's some that where the white balance is great, and then there's a whole bunch where it's really kind of yeah. not. You can really kind of contrast right. and see what the target is versus oh, right where, here. where it hit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's some great photos that are really kind of harmed by that kind of lighting. Exactly, and, yeah. That's and it's, sad. Not that big, it's not that big of a story. That's a beautiful, vivid, yep. eye-grabbing yeah. photo. Yep. You know? yep. And perfectly white-balanced. And, and the trick yep. of white-balance is you just need any white surface in the lighting you're in, the white of the plate, the white of the tablecloth. Yeah. Um, you're just shooting something that you're telling the camera, hey, camera, I know what you think, but don't. This is white. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Figure everything else off of that white point, and it'll right. figure. Then it, again, you're being smarter than your camera, right? It's like mm -hmm. you know, I see you holding up your, you know, holding up a yeah. white piece of, uh, yeah, of yeah. paper to the webcam. You know, it's going to readjust. It's going to say, "Oh, that's white." Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and then, then my windows promptly throw it out again. Um, there was oh shoot, there was a question I had for you, Evie. Um, oh, I knew my food photography had stepped up a notch when I started cleaning the rims of my plate. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, I didn't use to when work. You, I was like, yeah. oh, there's a, there's a spot there. Wait a minute, let me get that. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. clean up. How about those onion rings? Those look yummy. Those look really uh, Okay, yummy. I confess, I took this picture <laughs> oh, <laughs> with my iPhone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This was one of the most popular posts that we yeah, did on great. Big Space on our Facebook page. And I, I, I don't know what I put. I put something. I used the app over and I wrote some text on top of it, and mm -hmm. I was like, onion rings, question mark, and yeah. to kind of evoke a question, but um, yeah. I, I am so hungry for these right now. Yes, <laughs> yeah. and, and they're so in your face. They're just really cool, and seeing some cool text on top of it uh, is really nice, like right in your face. Bold. Do, do you right. think, Evie, you can get too close? Because for me, one of the best pieces mm. of advice I ever got was get closer. The, the guy kept pushing me and saying, no, closer, no, yeah. closer. And, and it, it, something finally clicked with me 
where it's like, oh, oh, I get it. Yeah, there is something about that mm -hmm. intimacy, especially oh. with food photography. Yeah, yeah. You have to know your camera, though, because if, if you are using a lens that's a little bit like a, that it easily makes, it looks like a fish eye, where right. it's all distorted, Too where you get yeah. so close and it's, it's all like just out of proportion. And so you really ha you have to know your camera and your lens and what you can do with it because you don't want to distort. Um, yeah. And I will say, you do get that with the iPhone sometimes. The iPhone yeah, is you do. a if you get too close. angle lens. If you get too yeah. close, it tends, especially on faces, be kind yeah. to people. Don't get in their face because everyone looks like I used yeah. to look six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what happened with this picture because it's kind of like everything is almost the same. It's a, the, the center is a little bit bulged out, it looks like. Yeah. Well, just so yeah. you know, those are pear pancakes with a, with a slice of pear in the middle. Yeah, those oh, are good too. Overhead. Those are good. Overhead. So graphic, overhead. overhead. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess, I mean, these, these, I pretty much went through most of these. This is this is a strawberry thing I yeah. took. That's a um, mighty lovely mint julep. That's with an iPhone yeah. as well. Right? <laughs> right effect. You know, effects can always save you. I know. I, I know that a lot of photographers will be very upset with me, but, you know. So I use over a lot. Sometimes. Over is the, right. the program that puts the words on, and I yeah. use that. Actually, I do a, a garden alphabet series I'm doing where I take uh, photos of various garden plants and yeah. flowers and stuff and, and just lay the name and perhaps the Latin name over them, and I use it for that. But uh, it also and that's an iPhone app, Over? Yeah. Yes. Over I think it's like Gram, 189. Yeah. Over mm. Gram is the free version, and Over is the full pay version. Sounds like you suggest the pay version. I moved up to. I took enough of the shots. the The free version will burn their uh, their water mark into the corner. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and after I did enough of these, I went. You know what? I'm going to actually end up turning these into a poster uh, because they're all square format. They're all similar style. I use different fonts for each one, but I am going to turn them into a a, a collection poster. Oh, that's a good idea. I, I don't want the overgram symbol in the finished photos. So. Speaking of over, <laughs> we are like 23 minutes over our normal show. Hello, people. You're crazy. Everyone who's watching at home, you're insane. We love you. We'll see you next week on Kitchen Party. Thank you to our guest. You were absolutely fantastic. Where can people find you online to make sure that um, if they're looking for you? Yeah, yeah. So the best place will be to go to my website, which is here, www eviabeler.com and from there you'll find all the rest. Awesome. All right guys. Thank you. Renee, Thank you. You Jeff, awesome. Douglas. Please come back. Please Please come back. Thank yes, you. Yes, absolutely. Yay, and we'll fun. see you next week on Kitchen Party. Remember 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific every Thursday. We are here. We are on Twitter. We are on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will see you next week. Thanks guys. Bye. Bye.